Hello one and all, welcome to the next vidcast. This is going to be a strange vidcast because, well, it's not that there's nothing I can tell you, but there's nothing I can tell you very specifically relating to the session. Reason being is that the stuff we're running is still a play-tested module that uh, you know I'm running, um, the details of which are being kept secret. So that element, except to tell you that still no one is dead and still the group are doing it. So they've been at it for three sessions in there now. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing, though, we've been covering the organisational battles between uh, Karak and Tanadol. However, um, Jez and Craig decided that they were going to mutually skip it that week. And then the following week we were going to do two in a row. So next session we will do two instead, two lots of organisational things. So that's going to realistically be the main update for you next vidcast in all probability. I mean, there's amazing stuff going on in, in, you know, in the adventure that they're actually in. You know, and if I told you this, it would blow your mind. But, you know, again, we can't ruin the possibility of being able to get this this out to um, a wider spread. But anyway, uh, what I thought I would do while I'm here is, in some respects, uh, speak to my players, actually, and just give some uh, feedback to observed situations, basically, while uh, I was GMing. And, you know, in the heat of and the speed of trying to actually GM you can't necessarily respond to uh, everything that's said and done at the table so I'll try to do it as non-specific as possible so I don't give things away to to um, everybody else that's not supposed to know elements of where you are and what you're doing but you will know what I'm talking about you the players and some of you m will pick up elements of this debate as we go anyway so you know the audience can um, come in on this kind of one thing that maybe the audience wouldn't be able to but um, this idea of uh, uh, con conflicts of expectation that's always a major thing with 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 the group because through whatever reason maybe they they think uh, um, the way that they imagine it when it's said to them isn't necessarily how a thing would be so if they were being chased by um, uh, a certain creature, for example, um, they might think, well, you know, how can the creature fit through said area? So it's the it's the big question, isn't it? You know, ask the Balrog, you know, um, how did you get in here? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, it was explained to the group how the getting in and out is 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 done, but the getting through uh, passages element when the creature is um, fairly big uh, upon actually showing a pi picture of said creature you then realize that uh, because of the size of its body being you know much smaller um, relatively to its legs that in in, in that sense it can um, maneuver itself more easily and you know use the legs to kind of like um, maneuver through it's all about like the mass of the body really isn't it and then then the question is only then how supple the uh, the joints are um, <clears throat> so that was a kind of um, conflicted expectation because where the GM understands but the players necessarily don't and, and they're all very much with a question mark until you can show them a picture of it but I'm just making sure that that's that's out there the other thing is trying to retain tension when the when the party are, um, are, are trying to run basically and you know you've you're, you've got a pace on now um, there were some times when I was trying to describe stuff to them and you know the group were Basically, it was like, yeah, okay, but we're just running. We haven't got time to, 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 to know about what we're running past and all this sort of thing. Now, 
<clears throat> you can bet that if there was something significant, basically I'm being told don't don't read so much um, with information basically at them while they're trying to run past because it seems to like break the focus of the fact that they're trying to move quickly. All right, okay, I understand that, and that, that's kind of what I was picking up on at the table. But counter to that. I will say, reading of the information, what does it actually hurt? That's the first question. Now, the second thing is, I wrote this. So, in some ways, um, it's kind of a little bit more precious to me than it normally would be as a module. Because I wrote it for a reason to be, to be read and I kind of want my descriptions to be understood. And as far as I'm concerned... Going past and seeing everything in a blur doesn't give you the same amount of immersion as actually knowing what it is that's there, you know, being able to build a picture up of, of what you've gone past. You know, I've gone I've gone to the trouble of imagining it. I'd like my players to imagine it too. And, it, you know, it would... I don't know. <clears throat> um, and also that said, the players will, you know, very often... Um, delay a uh, what should be a uh, relatively fast encounter by you know dragging along doing other things getting on the internet debating stuff longer than the encounter actually would and it drags then the encounter down um so i mean it's a case of the the, the group picking and choosing when it wants to do that and as a GM, you kind of have to be a sheriff as well, so you've really got to um, be a little bit unpopular and be ready to, um, you know, put minuses on them or do whatever. One possible fix that I I, I put there was to, um, you know, reduce their dragon points. You know, these these rerollable points that I I give them. They have as many as their level, and that rolling a natural eighteen is the only way to get them back. And of course, leveling, you you gain an extra one anyway. But, um, yeah, these re-rollable points to allow you to make re-rolls. Uh, maybe, you know, if they drag something, something on ridiculously too long and the GM is losing the plot, maybe say, right, whole group, one dragon point down, all of you. That kind of thing. <clears throat> Seeing as, you know, uh, dragon points aren't even supposed to be part of the mechanics, you know, there's... And... I've got my suspicions, of course, also, that the group are a little bit uh, not as thorough, let's just say, in tracking those dragon points correctly. You know, r removing one when they should be removing one and this sort of thing. Uh, I try to let the players do what they want, even if it breaks the mechanics. I do tend to do things like that. So there was a time when Chris's character was going to due to a skirmish stunt, be put, repositioned in a place where Tim Bob George was going to die, okay, just outright, because of, because of skirmish, basically, you know, all your health, gone, because realistically what's about to happen to you because of the skirmish is going to do you in, and yes, there are things you can do, I know that you've got like the stand firm thing you can do to, to negate yourself being pushed and all, all these kind of things however one of the players said look can i jump in and try and grab him <clears throat> um and so i facilitate that by saying right okay do an initiative test okay so you know i roll my 3d6 and generally i had four to the result giving me a target a random target number that they have to beat okay and then that's kind of the initiative test, what they've got to take on. So if they fail it, then everything's going to happen as would happen. And if they pass it, then they get to move quickly out of sequence. And now let's just say it's in combat or something, so you really are counting the turns. So once it comes to their turn, they've taken their, you know, their big major action sort of thing. They've They've taken it already to do that. And, you know, charge them a dragon point as well, just for the hell of it, just for the fact that they've 
broken mechanics just a little bit to act out of sequence and have their thing done right now and it would never be allowed to be used to like attack or something just out of sequence just for the hell of it necessarily it would be for uh you know special occasions so it's like save someone from outright dying and that kind of thing <clears throat> so yeah i mean I, I see those things as being doable and you know i'm very quickly facilitating uh homebrew rules fixes that are appropriate for the party the way they want to play it on the spot and i've always tried to run things in a way that you know um lets the party do what they want to do effectively but there are some times when the party pushes out a problem convinced that they can get through it and there's no way that the problem will let them um, and and one example is again when there's like a hidden element within that problem that is actually so dangerous that it's going to screw them and if if they get enough of those in a row they might be feeling ah oh, you know we're feeling a little bit boxed in here like our decisions are being made for us and um, the reality would be that the group themselves just think out of the box so very much normally that a, situ a, a place that is as dangerous as this place is and they, they, they are in a very high danger level area right now uh, is going to feel confined to them even though as I've uh, as I've shown you, they are being given lots of um, opportunities uh, to do what they want to do, the way they want to do them, with the home brewing rules and the coming up with solutions to things. And uh, you know, <clears throat> one player running off, separated from the rest of the party, and doing his own thing because he <clears throat> he wanted to. Um, there was a time I had to put my foot down really and put a question mark up when. Uh, Pete, Pete's character, his uh, Dalish elf Eric, was like, well, yeah, I'm going to attack Yellow Eye then because, you know, he's trying to do something silly and this is the sort of thing that the group would normally attack me for, so I'm going to attack him. And so, yeah, him there, he's basically demonstrating principle. And whatever kind of in character reasons you could call it, the fact that he's an elf and this place is maybe elf relevant. Like you could possibly try RPing away, but I came up with that, not the player. Um, basically wanted to do a kind of a PvP attack, attack the other player. And I said, well, I, I'm, I'm not keen to see this happen, but only for the reasons that I don't think this would be done out of... Um, out, as, as basically a facilitation of RP. I think it would be done as player... Uh, meta basically so oh yeah my characters always get killed for doing something stupid this one's done something stupid so i'm going to attack that's nothing that actually to do with the character though that wants to attack is it you're not actually portraying the character correctly but you know i said look i've got to put my foot down on this because you know it's it's nothing to do with the in character scenario to attack him now, the rest of the group actually surprised me with this, and they said, no, 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 why? You know, let him do it if he wants to do it. Now, I'm sure that they just wanted to themselves see comeuppance take place to, you know, um, the player who wants to try attempting to punish another player and then end up getting killed, and then we'll find it quite funny to see him yet again get killed. Now, from my point of view, though... I would be allowing really stinking role play to, you know, creep in under and, and let like a whole load of meta just invade the place. And that's kind of bad. Um, so I put it to a quick vote to the players and I said, look, if you can RP reason it away and you all vote that you would rather do it than not, vote for and against now. And if, if you vote for it, to do it then you can allow him to do it but you players can stop his ability to be able to do it because i the gm and contesting it <clears throat> so i put it that way and it never happened the vote was kind of a tie actually so it was never able to like deadlock and whatever and i i wasn't part of the vote so i suppose i had the final say because it was tied so again that's giving the players a democratic way of solving the solution that they seem to want to do 
But in their hearts, if they're really going to be honest about this, this was going to be nothing to do with role play, really. Not re not the actual intent behind it. The reason why it's happening, that Pete knows why it's happening. And Pete's not the greatest role player ever, so something's going to seem... He's going to think, well, this is my opportunity to do something. And at that very moment in time, it's still not role-play kind of thing. It's, I know it's a really bad and sucky situation for him. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. So there was another time when, again, not being too specific here to give too much away, but the group will know what I'm on about, when they had the option, well you know, a situation dealing with a gauntlet, okay? Gauntlet of incoming fire from something, okay? Um, now, there was a just kind of like run through it kind of solution, effectively. And at first the group thought about like maybe trying to fight the problem down and very quickly started to realise that that wouldn't be the best fix. And it was a case of like showing them as best as possible as well and making sure that they really get an idea, looking at the map and the severity of the situation. That, given the fact that also other forces were arriving on the scene, reinforcements that were going to make the situation uh, completely untenable of like uh, standing ground trading fire at the problem, you know, for too long. So you know, it turns into essentially a gauntlet. Now, <clears throat> I was chatting with one of the players after the session, and based on that conversation, and based on what the player said at the time at the table, there was a feeling amongst the players that I, the GM, sort of um, had them out running the gauntlet before before they could really choose to be running the gauntlet, you know, um, and that all of their choices that they could have made, that they could have done, put extra um, spells on themselves, buff themselves up, improve their armour via magic, put haste on <clears throat> to move quicker and thus, you know, get through said gauntlet faster. These kind of things could have been done. And it's like the feeling of maybe I rushed them out there too fast. Now, <clears throat> you can see a problematic contradiction there. Because the fact that reinforcements are coming, that they want to be quick. And because they want to be quick, we're getting them out there. And before, there was a feeling of almost like resentment at me trying to give too much information when they're trying to be quick. Now, the group could well decide, you know, we're going to hang back, we're not going to go yet, okay? And that's, that's fine. And I don't know if I pushed them too hard, actually, to, to, to run out there. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm not, not, not trying to leave things to hang around, basically, so that, that we're like 20 minutes on a place and they're still dawdling, wondering, you know, are we going to go out there or not? Trying to keep the pace going as much as I can to uh, retain interest basically and you know the time's ticking down we don't have unlimited time we always have like a particular cutoff and on that session it was a the cutoff was an hour um, even more severe than normal so uh, yeah trying to retain the pace and the energy of the thing so trying to get them out there and now the pl players maybe felt a bit hard done by or, or, or whatever that, that I pushed them too hard or whatever now um, that's kind of the sense I get anyway. Uh, so just to just to respond to this one, uh, now from my point of view, here's how I see it. The group are very assertive players. They make sure that they play things to their advantage and get what they want. Even if it means going a bit meta, they'll, they will do that. Um, they will say like, Oh, well, the well, thing's happening in the room. A trap's going off or whatever. That's fine. I didn't say I was in the room, though. 
<laughs> you know, that kind of, hey, I'm not in the room. Remember I said I was back here, I'm still back there. Or, or, or um, you know, like, I didn't say I was going forward. I didn't say I was entering. Everyone else said I didn't say I was entering. And it's, it's, they're very, very quick to assert themselves if, if the situation, as, as far as they see, is, is, is needed, right? So because this is such an assertive group, I have to keep them moving and assume that, that if they are doing something con contrary to, to, you know, what I'm, 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 you know, starting to do the roles for the things, okay, well, you know, you'd all be running and you'll be taking this much damage. The group's, you know, very, very capable of saying, whoa, hang on, we didn't say we were going yet. And they say things like this to me often. They very often will, will challenge and be assertive and say, oh, we're, you know, we're doing things this way. We haven't decided yet, hold on. Oh, okay, that's fine, you see. So I'm used to them being a group to do that. And I think, I suspect, what it is, is that, the, the you know, whoever didn't think of whatever spells to put on in time. And if you are in a time-pressured situation, it's kind of only really fair that you should have the same amount of time that your characters would have. Sometimes I think that makes it interesting to actually put the pressure on you. What do I do? What do I cast? We don't have long to actually debate this tactically. You know, how do we get through this? You know, have I got some spells that can actually help us survive this and that sort of thing? And I think the fact that you've got not a lot of time, maybe you, the player, has, has, has choked it or something, maybe it feels a little frustrating to the player. But, again, assertive group, I keep them moving, I'm used to them telling me if otherwise is otherwise, and, and you know, that's what I'm, I'm sticking to. And I don't always, like, push them out into the open or whatever, whatever, but in this particular case with the gauntlet, there was a hell of a lot of dice for me to have to roll. So I had to start getting those rolls made, type of thing. And I can very, very quickly adapt normally. So if it had said, hold on, we aren't going yet, then I could have worked out, I could have wrote down all the dice rolls and not applied them yet, you see. And then if they'd have done anything to the effects that I can cross out or modify my written down rolls, but I'm at least getting the rolls all in and there's a lot of rolls, you see. And it's a case of then saving time because I, I just need 